What is this? This bizarre ringing? I first noticed this one evening in 2004. It was after four hours of continuous highway travel, and I was lying awake in a cabin near Algonquin Park. I tried to identify the individual pitches, as if it was a large, resonant chord. It sounded at times like a single, sustained sonority from a, an Indonesian gamelan orchestra. Still, was this the onset of serious hearing damage? Or was it something slightly deeper? Some previously undetected psychoacoustic residue? Or an artifact of auditory scarification? or a mnemonic feedback loop lodged and oscillating within my aging auditory schema? Or were the tiny little cilia hairs in my basilar membranes simply searching for a signal that simply wasn't there? The following morning I took a walk along a wooded trail and I tried to imagine how the world would have sounded through Beethoven's infamously deteriorating auditory system. What if the entire temporal trajectory of his deafness, from mild tinnitus to a total silent void, could be compressed like a time-lapse film and then experienced as a kind of auditory prosthetic device? while replicating one of his infamous afternoon walks through the forest. And why stop at Beethoven? Why not fashion an entire series of prosthetic portraits, simulating the various auditory impairments of famous historical figures, artists, and musicians? Charles Darwin, or Jean-Jacques Rousseau, Adolf Hitler, or Barbara Streisand, How would a first-hand experience of the chronic and physical or sensory impairments through which they engaged with the world influence our perception and regard for them? The following prosthetic portrait is based on chronic tinnitus levels collected in household interviews as part of the 1994 to 1995 disability supplement to the U.S. National Health Interview Survey. In this portrait, the prevalence of chronic tinnitus in males is expressed as a percentage of the total population surveyed and is mapped to the volume level and spectral complexity of tinnitus tones heard in your left ear. Meanwhile, the prevalence of chronic tinnitus in females is expressed as a percentage of the total population surveyed and is mapped to the volume level and spectral complexity of tinnitus tones heard in your right ear. Zero, Zero years. years. In 2006, Dr. Michael Marmor combined medical knowledge with computer simulation techniques in order to understand how 19th century artists Claude Monet and Edgar Degas actually saw the world and their canvases through the various eye diseases that plagued them in their later years. Five years. What he was able to begin to parse out was the extent to which the blurred, darkening, and yellowing effects of Claude Monet's cataracts, for example, had become a determining factor in the painting styles of his later period. Ten years. An auditory equivalent to this was first described in 1994 by research scientist Durand Begot, in which the discrete differences in ear shape, head size, physical height, and so on, between different people, could be measured, quantified, and then reproduced as a form of digital ear print. 15 years. He wrote, in the future, in fact, 
I think we'll see musicians and recording engineers carrying around special sets of data for ears in the same way that keyboard players carry around synthesizer patches now. 20 years. On the backs of CD packages, you'll see credits like, this CD was recorded with Michael Jackson's ears, unquote. This technology is already here. 25 years. So how to make a time-lapse portrait of tinnitus in hearing loss? Current research suggests that tinnitus most often occurs following an injury to the cochlea or inner ear. 30 years. The auditory system adapts to this injury by increasing neural sensitivity. What happens next is analogous to an attempt at recording extremely quiet sounds with a microphone. As you increase the microphone's input levels, 35 years. any system noise or self-noise generated by the microphone and the recording equipment is also increased. 40 years. But tinnitus is not simply a form of self-noise. Research suggests that the particular pitches of the sufferer's tinnitus indicates the outer edges of damaged or dead regions within the cochlea or basilar membrane. 45 years. To establish correlations between the audible pitches and these dead regions, patients typically engage in a form of self-portraiture. 50 years. They try to replicate the pitch and loudness levels of their tinnitus by manually adjusting the pitch and loudness levels of a series of synthesized tones on a computer, but with questionable results. 55 years. For patients, the results are often disappointing while also revealing a circular problem, that while a valid pitch match first requires a prior and valid loudness match, a valid loudness match requires a prior and valid pitch match. 60 years. As patients attempt to match pitch and loudness levels, a strange recursive feedback loop is activated. The process of making a self-portrait of their tinnitus only further amplifies or exacerbates their tinnitus symptoms.